Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Brian and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to finish looking at this 27 gallon Fortress air compressor that I picked up from Harbor Freight that I got during a $1,400 tool haul. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link that up top. Now I've already done a video going over the specs of this and I've actually already tested this compressor and did a video, but the footage was unusable. So I'm going to redo it because I don't want to just post anything. I want to at least make it halfway decent. So if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to post that up top. Links for both will be down in the description as well, and I'll post a link for it at the end of this video as well. But today we're gonna test some basic air tools and some higher demand air tools. We're gonna see how long this thing takes to fill up from empty to full. Then we're gonna see how long it takes to fill up from when it kicks back on to full again. Then we're gonna see how long I can run some of these tools without it dropping below the 90 PSI that is gonna be required from most of these basic air tools that I'm using. And I'm also gonna pop this thing open. We're gonna take a look inside just to see how it works, just for fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first we're gonna turn it on. Now I'm gonna to try to get you a listen about how loud this is. I'm gonna not edit the audio just to try to give you an idea. Now this is not obviously a great test for this, but it's all I got right now, so I'll just turn it on. The audio may get loud for a second, so if you got earbuds in, you may wanna take that into consideration and turn your volume down. But also, I'm gonna go ahead and start a timer, and we're gonna see how long this takes. As you can see, this is completely empty. We're just gonna see how long it takes to fill this up from zero to 200 PSI, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with some light tests and then work our way up, and we'll just see how this thing performs. So let's go ahead and get a listen. If you got earbuds in, turn it down. Okay, so it took a little bit over 11 minutes to go from completely empty to completely full. So I'm gonna start off with this, just this little brad nailer. Now let's talk about your outlet PSI. Now you obviously, like in the last video, you adjust it with this knob here. On your tool, it will tell you a recommended PSI to run your tool at. Now this, for instance, has a recommended PSI from 70 to 120 PSI. I'm gonna run it at about 90. And that's normally what you'll run most of your air tools like this. Now, when you get down to your paint sprayers and whatnot, you're obviously going to run those at lower PSI, but I'm going to run all these tools at about 90. So I don't expect this compressor to struggle with this tool. And if it does struggle with this tool, then obviously we have a serious problem, but these are really low demand. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to blast into this four by four a bunch of times until the compressor kicks on. I'm obviously not going to be able to keep track because this is going to do a lot, but I'm just gonna get about an idea how long it takes to kick on. And I don't expect that I could be able to keep up with this compressor. And obviously you wouldn't be nailing this much. If you was doing subfloors or sheeting a roof or something, you would probably need a compressor to just keep running while you're nailing those down, obviously. But I don't expect this compressor to struggle with this. So all I'm gonna do is run it till it kicks on. And then I'm gonna start a timer again and find out how long it takes to go from, because the cutoff on this is 160. When it hits 160, the compressor will start again and try to fill back up to 200 till it shuts off again. So when it kicks on, I'm gonna stop nailing, then put the timer on again to see how long it takes to go from 160 to 200. So let's get started. Okay, I'm hooked up and ready to go. I'm gonna start my timer and see about how long I could just keep blasting nails into this. And then, like I said, once it kicks on, I'll stop nailing and we'll see how long it takes to fill back up. So let's get started. Well, I was able to nail for about a minute and 36 seconds straight, and it took four minutes and eight seconds from the time I started the timer. So if we take a minute 36 off of that, it takes about two and a half minutes for this thing to fill back up. So next, we're gonna run this 3 8 air ratchet. 
I'm going to just run some bolts up and down and we're going to do the same thing again. But this time I'm going to see how long I can keep going until this drops below 90 PSI or I feel like the tool's not as effective as it should be. Okay, I just got this U-bolt in my vise. I'm going to run these nuts up and down until this kicks on. And like I said, I'm going to keep going afterwards. So I'm going to start my timer, see how long I can run this tool effectively and see how long it runs until it kicks on. So let's get started. Okay, I was able to run this for about Okay, I was able to run this for about 40 seconds until the compressor kicked on. Now you seen the only time I stopped was to switch from tightening to loosening, but I was able to keep running it doing that same process for about 2 minutes and 30, 2 minutes and 40 seconds until I felt like the compressor was no longer putting out enough air to make this tool as effective as it should be. Now after I got done and stopped, it took like seven and a half minutes for this thing to fill back up to 200 for me to be able to start over again. So you can see how this can be time consuming, but I'm trying to make it as quick as possible for you. So you will just have to take my word for it in a lot of cases, but I have no reason to lie, as I said. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the 3 8 air impact. And as I said, I've done this before. So, I'm gonna just let you know, we're just gonna do the 3 8 air impact because I actually did before, as you can see from some of the footage that I used a 3 quarter inch air impact as well to see if it made any difference, but they both lasted exactly the same. So let's just use the 3 8 air impact and we'll just use it as a guide for being able to use an air impact with this compressor. So let's get started. I was able to hammer on this for about 30 to 40 seconds and then I felt like it got to the point to where it wasn't quite as effective or may not have worked at about 230. Between 215 and 240, I'd say you might have wanted to stop. Now, I kept the timer running this time and it took 10 minutes and four seconds for it to fill back up after I stopped hammering on this. So. That's gonna be about your downtime if you have to actually use this for that long. Next, we're gonna to move to an angle die grinder and I'm just gonna run this wide open, same thing, run a timer, see how long it takes. Then we'll move on to a couple other tools as well. So let's get started. I was able to run the angle die grinder about 24 seconds until the compressor kicked on and then I was able to run it about a minute and 20 seconds before I felt like it was just too low. At about 40 seconds it began to dip below the pressure I had it set at 
and then I felt like I maybe I could have used it a little bit longer than that, but about a minute and 20 seconds, about all you're gonna get out of that tool straight. So next, I've hooked up this needler. We're gonna do the same thing as we did with all the other tools. I'm gonna run it wide open. We'll see how long it takes and then let it fill back up and then we'll do one more tool and then we'll end this. Okay, so the needler took about 24 seconds for the compressor to kick on, and at about 50 seconds, it started to dip below the PSI that I was running it at, and I was able to run it for about a minute and 50 seconds before I felt like it was probably too low. Now, you probably could have stopped before then, but you could have ran it that far, but I don't think you could have made it much further past a minute 50. So the last tool we're gonna test is this air hammer. Gonna do the same thing, run it wide open, see how long it takes, and then we'll end this video. Well, I was able to run the air hammer for about 35 seconds before the compressor kicked on, and then I could take it for about two minutes, but it was getting close to probably would have lasted about another 30 seconds, but I couldn't take the noise anymore. So I felt like that was good enough. And I felt like I've tested these tools enough. And like I said, I've already done this anyway, but I wanted to give you a, as thorough of a review as I possibly could. Okay. You can see I pulled the plastic cover off of the compressor. Now I couldn't get the spade connectors off of the switch and I couldn't get the switch to pop out. So we're going to have to just leave this connected because I obviously don't want to break it and I don't want to pull too hard. So I'm just going to leave that on and we'll take a look at it the best we can. But we'll start on this side. And what happens is the electricity is coming through. Obviously, this is going to be a brush motor. They claim it to be one and a half horsepower, but it'll turn. And in turn, it turns this and in turn pumps this piston in and out. Your air is coming in through here. We see it's where our air filter goes. So probably what I imagine happens is this will stay open when the piston is on its pullback and it's sucking in air. And then as the piston starts to go forward, there's probably a valve that closes here and there's a valve up here. And as this valve, when this valve closes, this piston compresses that air in and then another valve will open here and it'll put your air down into your tank. Now, air, compressed air is hot, so I guess this is probably copper to help try to cool the air down as it's going into your tank because when, by the time the air gets out, you know, obviously everybody knows air is cold, so, but when it's compressed, it actually heats the air up. Okay, the best way I could figure this out is we can see there's a couple ground straps in here, but what happens is your electricity comes in through your outlet, obviously, and it's gonna run through a few switches. First is gonna be your on off switch. And once you turn that off, obviously it's gonna disconnect the electricity, not allow any of the flow through, but when you turn it on, it's gonna make the connection. And that connection is gonna run down to this, and this is gonna be the pressure switch, the initial pressure switch that will stop your compressor from getting electricity when it hits the 200 PSI mark or whatever the PSI mark is on the compressor. So that will remain open, allowing the compressor to run until the diaphragm probably down in there will compress to a certain amount and it will stop the electricity flow. But we could take a look. We can see the fan here is probably meant to cool the motor down, obviously, because this is probably obviously really hot. But we can see the way this is all wired up, and it's pretty simple the way it's wired. Like I said, there's just two switches, and obviously, as I said before, in your valve assembly, there's going to be an emergency pressure relief valve there just in case it does get a little bit too much, because if this fails, then obviously it's going to just keep pumping air into the compressor and then like we said in the other video this thing will release as a last ditch safety effort to keep this from exploding
I thought that was pretty cool. We got to look at it in slow motion too. Hopefully it turns out. So let me go ahead and put this back together and we'll end this video. So all in all, let's answer the question about this compressor you obviously can see for yourself you obviously can judge off of what i've done what i've tested to know if this compressor is right for you now if you have to use tools like angle die grinders die grinders needlers for long extended periods of time this compressor won't last very long as we've seen now they have you know the m12 battery operated angle die grinder and I think people said you get about two minutes out of that per battery, two amp hour battery. Obviously, you can get bigger amp hour batteries. But if you have a compressor and if you need to run those tools for long extended periods of time, you probably should go with a bigger compressor. But the reason I bought this, as I said, is because it's smaller. I don't use air tools that often. I just wanted something that I could take with me if I needed to go somewhere to have the ability to use compressed air because a big 60 gallon tank, I'm not going to be able to load that up as easy as I'm going to load this up. This is sufficient for me. This will do what I need it to do. I'm not going to be using air impacts for, as we've seen, two minutes or so before I have to stop using them. So for me, this is a pretty good purchase for me, exactly what I need it for. Like I said, it's going to depend on what you want to do with your air compressor as to what air compressor you should buy. Obviously, if you're wanting to have air in your garage that you can use doing anything, you're obviously want to, going to want to go with a 60-gallon tank, 80-gallon tank, a bigger tank with a higher SCFM. This is sufficient for me, so I'm happy with it. $350 for this. I feel like that's a pretty good price. I feel like that it's a pretty good air compressor. I feel like it probably would be comparable to some of the air compressors in its class. Now, obviously, I don't have any here to compare it to, but from what I've used, what I've done, what I know, I feel like this probably would be comparable. I feel like the price is pretty decent at $350. Now, you could find cheaper air compressors. You could find used air compressors. You could just spend more money to get a bigger tank if that's what you need. But for me, I feel like this is good. I feel like it's perfect. I feel like it's exactly what I need. So I'm happy with the purchase. Would I purchase it again? You know, probably. I, I, I'm happy with it. I don't think that there's anything wrong with this compressor. Now, obviously, it's new. It's a month old. I've been using it sporadically here and there because I don't use compressed air that much. I mean, let's just be honest. I don't use compressed air that much. So for me, it's going to work perfect. Now, like I said, it's going to depend on what you're going to want to spend. You may not want to spend this much. You could find a cheaper one. You could probably try the McGraw one or somewhere, something else at a cheaper price. But for me, I'm happy with it. And you can make your own decision based off of what I did. If you want to see anything else or know anything else about this compressor, let me know and I'll try to get it done for you. And if you want to see the first video I did going over the specs of this compressor and explaining why I bought this compressor, watch this video right here. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, click this round button right here. I appreciate y'all watching. Till next time, stay real.